So today's video is going to be a discussion video, not really spending much time editing the background footage, etc. But I'm definitely interested in hearing all of your opinions down below. So I wanted to touch on the current hot topic in Baldur's Gate 3. And no, we're not talking about the anomaly thing anymore, unless you want me to. And please, it's okay if you end up disagreeing with me on this or disagreeing with others. There's quite the diverse amount of opinions on this. Just share your reasonings below in a respectful way. And myself and others are probably much more likely to consider your perspective. So as many of you are aware, Larian Studios has made a change to the racial ability score bonus system and character creation. Basically, the early access system has been scrapped. For those of you who may not fully understand what I'm talking about in early access, and for the most part, for the majority of the lifetime of D&D, your choice of a race and subrace would affect what ability score bonuses that you get in character creation. For example, in this early access footage that I'm showing you right here, if I choose the drow race in any of the subrace choices, I get a plus two to dexterity and a plus one to charisma. And if I choose the gold dwarf, I end up getting a plus two to constitution and a plus one to wisdom. These bonus points are added to those particular ability scores. So each race starts with their own little boost in particular abilities. Now, the reason why these racial bonuses are so important is because without a racial bonus in a particular ability, you cannot get an ability score past 15 in the character creator with the way that the point by system works. So 15 is a plus two modifier for an ability, but so is 14. So you're not going to get a ton out of giving yourself an odd number in an ability, even though there are cases where you may want one. Generally speaking, most players, especially beginners, are going to strive for even numbers across the board. So you get that boost to the modifier. I will be doing beginner guides videos explaining all of this soon enough if you're a little bit confused. So when a race gets a plus one or a plus two to an ability or abilities, that will then allow that player to go higher than 15. So as a gold dwarf, I can get my constitution to 16 or 17. I can get over that 15. And also I can boost my wisdom to 16 with that plus three modifier. And this makes the gold dwarf a really good pick for classes and builds that aim for high constitution or aim for a high wisdom score and it makes the gold dwarf an exceptionally good pick for classes that can make great use out of both constitution and wisdom for example the cleric class and the druid class so generally speaking most players would choose a race that complements their class when speaking on ability scores at least that class's primary ability score the new system that I did experience when I got to play the full version of BG3 has done away with the specific racial bonuses and is instead now giving every single race and subrace the ability to put a plus two and a plus one into any ability score of their choice. All races and subraces get that blanket plus two and plus one to put where they want to. I do want to interject though quickly and just say that we don't know exactly what the full version is going to be, even though a lot of us played the full version, it's not version 1.0 and there were things that were missing in the version that I played. So Larian might not actually fully stick to the system. Things could be optional. They could have something else planned. They might end up allowing rolling for stats. Really don't know with certainty. But with this new system that appears to be what it's going to be like, now I can play a gold dwarf and still optimize my ability scores to fit the monk class, for example, pretty well. Or I can now play a gold dwarf and play as the paladin class and put my plus two into strength and that plus one into charisma, which is just a really good paladin start. The potential problem here, and potential is the key word, is that this in turn may cause an imbalance in the races, as the races such as the half-elf excelled before because it was the only race that gave the player some agency over where to put some points. The half-elf used to be a plus two in charisma, but you also got a plus one to put into two ability scores of your choice. Since all the races now get pretty much close to that agency, the half-elf is kind of losing out here in terms of ability scores as they are losing that extra point. And this is also true for the mountain slash shield dwarf as they also lose an overall point because before they got a plus two and a plus two and now they're only getting a plus two and a plus one. And then of course you have the human race which didn't get any special racial features before but instead their kind of gimmick was that they offered players a plus one in all ability scores. With the new system, this changes how these particular races are viewed now in terms of class to race ability score optimization. And you know what? I can absolutely understand player frustration over this, especially from those who are accustomed to 
playing certain races, either from playing D&D or even Baldur's Gate 3's early access. To attempt to balance this, though, Larian has added in some extra racial features to the human and the half-elf. I'm not exactly sure what the mountain dwarf gets yet. But the debate over whether or not these features can ever possibly make up for that ability score nerf for these particular races is going to be a debate that I'm not entirely sure one side or the other can win outright. Now, humans and half-elves seem to now be getting light armor proficiency added to their racial features, but I could be wrong in saying that. Uh, don't quote me yet until we get official proof. And it also looks like they're getting shield proficiency and proficiency with polearm type weapons. There's also a few other racial features that have been added, and it seems like the human may be getting some more skill proficiencies now, but until we get that full confirmation, I don't want to comment too much. Now on the other side of this, so the opposite of some races feeling like they got nerfed, there's also the races that may now perhaps be a bit too powerful. For example, half-orcs racial features are freaking powerful. And one thing that kind of held the half-orc back from being like the ultimate choice for most melee classes is that they're really only super great for strength-based classes and builds. But this is not the case anymore for the half-orc or any of the races because you can put those ability scores wherever you want. So the half-orc has been buffed while the half-elf has been nerfed. It starts to make you wonder, is everything still balanced okay? Honestly, I'm not sure. Half-orc players probably love it, while half-elf players may be pissed off. So I don't have the answer to the balance question. But let's be truthful here. Many things in D&D are already unbalanced. This is not a competitive PvP game, but at the same time, I do think that maintaining some balance, especially in the core classes, is probably something that most players want. But let's not act like everything in D&D is perfectly balanced as it is. Now, the biggest positive to come out of this system is that players are no longer restricted in their class and race choice, and they can happily play whatever combination they want. Want to play as a strength-based gnome barbarian? Go for it. Want to play a Githyanki rogue? It's yours for the taking. In terms of ability scores, nothing is holding you back anymore. And I actually think that's pretty great, while also understanding the hesitation for players to gladly accept this change. There's something nice about choices having consequence and real impact on the game. And I kind of like the original idea that a gnome just can't get a 16 in strength right off the bat like a half-orc could. A gnome would have to sacrifice a bit more in their character development to be as strong as a half-orc, which makes sense and it adds a whole nother layer of immersion in my opinion. And completely getting rid of that does take away a bit of that significance behind your racial choice that you make. With that said, I actually don't think this is as big of a deal as some may be making it out to be. In a game like Baldur's Gate 3, where there's going to be a million magical weapons, weird story paths that take you into situations that can alter your ability scores, a million different ways to multi-class, etc., all players are going to end up with drastically different power levels, etc. And that plus one that gnomes used to not be able to get in strength really just don't think it's going to change that much in the overall scope of the game. And I think I do lean more towards giving players the ability to choose a race that they want without having to feel like it's not a good choice to make. Now, after hearing several different viewpoints on this, I feel like I'm probably leaning towards wanting a hybrid or perhaps just the optional choice of using the new system or sticking to the old one. You can technically recreate several of the races to be exactly how it was before. You just have to assign the right bonuses in the right place, but you can't do it with all of them. The Tasha's Cauldron of Everything method is actually quite interesting to me, as not all races get a blanket plus two and plus one. The amount of bonus points that you get in the Tasha's D&D book is tied to the original system. You just have more agency over where you want to put them. So Mountain slash Shield Dwarves used to be forced to take that plus two in strength and a plus two in constitution. But now in Tasha's, they have the agency to put both of those plus twos wherever they want, but the twos have to stay grouped together. So the Mountain Dwarf doesn't lose a point like you do in the BG3 system. The Tasha system maintains the balance of the amount of attribute points that each race gets, while also giving agency to the players. So you could technically play exactly the same way as the original system if you wanted to, but with Varian's new system, you just can't replicate the original system with a few of the races, at least from what we've seen so far, and also you can't change the racial features. So I can totally understand some of the frustration that half-elf players are experiencing, for example, or mountain dwarf players may be feeling when they realize that they're losing a point. And some of these players have been playing these races for their entire D&D lives. And to have it changed up like that, 
you, you got to understand the perspective that they're coming from. So my thoughts overall, I guess I would say, are that this is probably a positive thing for the overall community, what Larian's doing here, as I do think it's better probably to let players play whatever race they want without feeling like they're held back. I think that offers a more enjoyable experience. As someone who is fine with the original system, like I wouldn't care if the original system was still there and we didn't have this, I still did feel a little frustrated when I was making characters because I do like to optimize things sometimes and I never felt like I should play as a gnome cleric. Instead, I felt like when I'm playing a gnome, I probably should stick to, you know, the wizard class. But with that said, I also feel like a hybrid system may be the best solution here, perhaps something similar to Tasha's maybe even a little bit more restrictive than that. I do like choices having real impact, and I am a fan of the lore of these races being something that's actually impactful to a certain extent. But also, player agency sometimes can just beat that. Let, sometimes it's better just to let players have fun and do what they want. At the very least, I would advocate for an optional way to play the old way. If Larian does end up sticking to this new system and there's no optional settings or any hybrids or anything, I don't think it's a huge deal overall, though, because everyone's playthrough is just going to be so drastically different from one another. And just because you can't get a 16 and three ability scores in character creation and you can only get it in two now with the half elf, are you really going to notice a huge difference by the time you finish the game with tadpole powers, 754 magical items, you know, using the variety of in-game elixirs? Maybe you let a crazy NPC operate on you, changing your ability scores around, etc. So happy to hear your guys' opinions below, and please remember, like I mentioned earlier, this is not really a topic to get extremely toxic about and upset at people if you disagree with them. Laying out your perspective in a respectful, clear way is the way to get others to consider what you want or what you think. Thank you all so much for watching. If you'd like to join the community Discord, the link is below in the video description. We have a great community over there, and I'll catch you on the next one.